So in spite of what Raleigh told you, yes, we are actually still trying to model these sorts of transformations. Um, and it is complicated, but we feel like we're, we're on the way to developing a modeling system that we can actually use in a potentially regionally uh, significant wetland. So, um, and this is work that we're doing in our research group with Raleigh, as well as a colleague of ours, Wen Long at Pacific Northwest National Laboratory, and then a project that's funded by NASA that uh, Maria is on, as well as some other researchers um, at CERC, as well as City College New York. So this image is of the uh, Blackwater and Nanakook River uh, wildlife refuge and wetland system, or wetland area in Chesapeake Bay. This is the Maryland region of Chesapeake Bay. So the goal is to take a sequential series of steps where we start with a relatively simple modeling approach, develop it in a uh, small scale but well-constrained system, and then scale that up to a system that isn't as well-constrained but can actually potentially uh, deliver a fairly large carbon flux in terms of DOC to the estuary itself. So Raleigh broke down the different pools, and this is a, a simplification of the model, but um, I highlighted a couple processes that we have added into our carbon cycle model, which is uh, the ICM model, which is uh, developed originally by Carl Serco back in, um, back in the early 90s. So we've added in now where we can just explicitly, or explicitly uh, put in a marsh area, and that marsh area, or wetland area, can uh, add DOM into the sediments. And whether that process is through like, exudation or leaching, we don't specify. Pretty much you say you have a below ground biomass and then you have this certain amount of DOM that gets added into the wetland sediments. And those classes are defined in terms of either their biological ability, in terms of what we call our non-colored DOM, or DOM that doesn't have an interaction with the light field, or in terms of the C DOM or colored DOM, they're specified in terms of their photoreactivity and their optical properties. And these uh, DOM compounds can diffuse with the overlying water column, whereby, and also undergo remineralization in inorganic compounds, of course. And in the water column, we've added in uh, functionality where we can have photochemical reactions as well as microbial breakdown. So now we have two different things that can affect the spatial distribution as well as the temporal distribution of the DOM and how it gets remineralized. There we go. Okay. So this is the model domain that we've built. Um, we actually have a paper that's in, in uh, we resubmitted to Estuaries and Coast that describes the physics of the system, but it's a FECOM hydrodynamic model. And way back here is the G Crew wetland uh, that's been operated by CERC. They've had long-term measurements there dating back to the 80s. So this is our small-scale, well-constrained system. And it's a three-dimensional model that actually extends all the way out to uh, the main stem Chesapeake Bay. So the Bay Bridge is up here, Annapolis is down here. So we're taking a very small model, or small wetland, a three hectare wetland, and then seeing what happens in this sort of larger scale estuary. And like I said, we have tons of measurements in the system, um, which help to constrain the model as we parameterize it. And so I'm gonna show you guys a little animation, and this is looking specifically at the new pools of colored dissolved organic carbon. And um, so these slides, uh, these animations are gonna show the difference between model runs with photo degradation on, so the new, this new photochemical degradation module that I've built, and model runs without it. So we're going to see how the carbon changes between these three different pools. And these arrows show the transformation pathways. So DOC3, the highest molecular weight, highest photolabile, gets transformed into both DOC2 and DOC1 and kind of cascades down. And you'll see that, or, so anyways, you'll see that we have that accumulation and runs, an accumulation and runs without uh, photodegradation of these DOC2 compounds and DOC1 compounds, um, or it runs with photodegradation because they are the product of the sequen sequential degradation of the DOC3. And in what model runs with the photodegradation on, we actually have a loss of the DOC3 as it gets photodegraded. So this is kind of just uh, saying that the model is doing what we expect it to do in terms of the DOC distribution. And these are all, these are all milligrams uh, of carbon per liter. So up in the wetland, we get almost a difference of one milligram carbon per liter, two milligrams carbon per liter um, on average. And lastly, this is uh, the results slide. So we can look at other processes within the model. Um, so this is uh, average net primary production difference between model, model runs with photodegradation and without photodegradation. So you can see that when we have photodegradation in this wetland system, we get uh, a pretty high increase in terms of the net primary production, up to 100 milligrams of carbon per meter squared per day. And that is because these wetland systems are inherently light limited, especially when you have lots of nutrients in this typically uh, typical Chesapeake Bay eutrophied sub-estuary. So just to reiterate the, the process we've underwent, we have experiments and observations, which I didn't talk too much about today, and we've built those into developing idealized modeling scenarios. 
we scale that up to our small well-constrained systems, and then we're currently working on uh, scaling up to the Blackwater National Wildlife Refuge, which is this Landsat image back here. And we actually have built the physical model for the Blackwater and uh, run it for 2005, so it's actually working. Um, and you can come check out my poster this evening if you're interested in more of sort of the nuts and bolts of the model as well as how we parameterize the new uh, modules in terms of the sediment as well as the photodegradation. And I'm out of time, but I'll just leave you with these questions. Raleigh talked about them, um, but we can ponder them and hopefully discuss after. Thank you.